Hi everyone and welcome to today's video where we are going to be looking at Act 4 Scene 1 and we're picking this up at about line 60 and we're going to look at a chunk of about 100 lines or so. So in terms of the plot so far, in the last um, couple of scenes that we've looked at, we've talked a lot about the handkerchief that Othello gave to Desdemona, um, which um, has now passed into Bianca's hands. And Othello has had a moment of complete psychological disintegration, where he's lost all control over his rational thought. In the section we're going to look at today, Othello recovers from the epileptic fit that he has and Iago tells him to hide himself behind a curtain so that he can eavesdrop on a conversation that Iago is going to have with Cassio. Now Othello believes that this conversation is about Desdemona and Cassio and the relationship between them whereas actually the conversation is about Cassio and his mistress Bianca. So we're going to be looking at a big question today as we normally do and our question today is very big. It is, is baseness part of the human condition? We've talked about baseness and debasement in previous videos and this concept is to do with all of the um, not very nice aspects of humanity, I suppose, the jealousy and the hatred and the lust and I suppose um, if we were talking about this in religious terms, it would be the sinful aspect of human nature. Whereas what we've seen with Othello and the start of the play is that he's got a lot of nobility and integrity and honour and then Iago is dragging him down to have the same kind of base attitude to humanity and existence as Iago does. Now Desdemona doesn't understand that all people have this base part to their to their character so she thinks that Othello is just completely noble and honourable and that he doesn't have any of this jealousy or envy or hatred in him at all and what we're going to discover today is that even someone as noble as Cassio has a base element to his character so um, Othello is hiding behind a pillar or a curtain or something at the edge of the stage we as the audience know that he's eavesdropping and Iago starts to have this conversation with Cassio. So Iago says to himself, he shall smile, Othello shall go mad and his unbookish jealousy must construe per Cassio's smiles, gestures and light behaviour quite in the wrong. So construe means to make or to turn or to understand. So what Iago is saying here is that Othello's jealousy the jealousy and envy that he already feels about Cassio's relationship with Desdemona will force him to misinterpret this conversation. So then Iago turns to Cassio and says, how do you know, Lieutenant? How are you? And Cassio takes offence um, at the use, well, maybe not offence, he's upset at Iago's use of the name Lieutenant. He says, the worse that you give me the addition whose want even kills me. And this want is the fact that he doesn't have the title of lieutenant anymore. He's not, um, doesn't have any responsibility or any position within the army. And this is what he wants to regain. So Cassio says how upset he is that he isn't given this name anymore. And Iago says, well, ply Desdemona well, ask Desdemona, and you are sure on it. So Desdemona will get you this job back. So from Othello's perspective, this conversation between Cassio and Iago is about Desdemona. So then Iago whispers Bianca's name and Cassio thinks the conversation is about Bianca. So he says, now if this suit, if this um, appeal to Othello to get you your job back lay in Bianca's part, if Bianca could control whether you were lieutenant or not, how quickly should you speed? So Iago is saying that Bianca loves you so much that if she was able to give you the job of lieutenant, she would do so immediately. And Cassio laughs and he says, alas, per caitiff, per wretch. And Othello, in his eavesdropping position, says, look how he laughs already. So he thinks that they're having this conversation and laughing about Desdemona. Iago says, I never knew a woman love man so. And Cassio says, alas, per rogue, I think in fear she loves me. And of course, this is Bianca who loves him. But Othello thinks that it's Desdemona who loves Cassio. So the deception is deepening at this point of the play. And Othello is completely hoodwinked and manipulated into misunderstanding this conversation. And this is part of Iago's power in the play, that he's able to not only use the language to mislead people, but also to stage manage. So to... 
place particular people in particular positions on the stage to act in a certain way. So Iago almost acts like the playwright or the stage manager of this play. So he's incredibly powerful at this point of the text. Let's look at how women are described then in this conversation between Cassio and Iago. So they're talking about Bianca and they talk about her as a caitiff, a wretch, a rogue, could be a scoundrel, could be a term of endearment, it's a bit ambiguous, a monkey, again, it could be an endearment at the time, but it certainly does reveal a level of contempt for Bianca. A bauble is definitely a fool, and a fitchy is a poor cat, which would be smelly and lecherous and so on. So not very nice ways of describing Bianca. This completely contrasts with how Cassio described Desdemona in Act 2, where he talked about her as being the divine Desdemona, and our great captain's captain about how much power she had. He said when Desdemona alighted off the boat, the riches of the ship has come on shore. So even though there's an element of objectification there, in terms of describing Desdemona um, using the language of riches and objects, there is a great level of admiration for her. Whereas Cassio describes Bianca in these very derogatory sexualized terms. Now to go back to our big question, is baseness part of the human condition? Well, we would have thought that Cassio was very noble, um, had a lot of integrity, that he had a very um, honourable way of looking at the world. But the way he talks about Bianca, the way he acts about Bianca, reveals that he does have this element of baseness in his character as well. And so what Shakespeare is pointing out to us really clearly through Cassio's character here is that it's not just Iago who's a villain, Villainy dominates Iago's character, but there are aspects of villainy and immorality in every single one of us that can grow or be exploited by others. And that's the mistake that Desdemona is making, is that she doesn't recognise that each individual does have that level of potential immorality in them. She thinks that Othello can be completely free from that. So I know this was quite a short video, but I want you to go away and think a little bit about names and naming in the play. Giving someone a name reveals your understanding of their identity, their social standing, their individuality. You know, think about how annoyed you are if someone gets your name wrong or if someone calls you an insult um, and how attached some people are to their titles as well. So obviously, as is, is clear from my name on this video, um, you know, I quite like being called Dr. Smith because it shows something about who I am and the work that I put into my education. You know, whereas if you were called Sir or King or Queen or anything, your title would reveal something about your standing in society and what you'd worked for in life. So everything to do with names and naming reveals something about the character, the person, but also about the person who's using that name, so what their attitude is to the other, the person that they're addressing. So what I'd like you to do is to track what the pairs of characters call each other throughout the play, and then reflect on why they choose these names. So what do Othello and Iago call each other? Well, to Othello's face, Iago says, my lord, behind his back, he says, the more. Othello, when speaking about Iago, says, honest Iago. So it's quite a lot of information is caught up in their choice of names there. So have a think about that, make some notes and then um, watch the next video on the end of Act 4, Scene 1.